Resurrection only means the uh, mentally dead people. We are the people to be resurrected. And when the resurrection of the so-called Negro or the black man of America, when he is resurrected into the knowledge of self and in the knowledge of God and the devil, then uh, that's the end of the world. And this is it now going on. This is the end of uh, the white man's world. Uh, according to the history of scientists and science, you can take it for granted. It is the end, and this must be done in order to uh, not to give injustice to a person that has no knowledge of what it is all about. So before the God can destroy the world, he must give us a knowledge of why he is destroying me and why are you killing me. He don't do things unjust. And so he always, according to the Holy One, he makes a people aware of why that he destroys them or chastises them. You mentioned that the American Negro is being resurrected to knowledge of himself, self-knowledge. Mr. Muhammad, how did you receive this self-knowledge? I received uh, this knowledge that uh, I am teaching and that I am putting my life uh, against that if you can prove it uh, other than the truth uh, from God in the person of one uh, Mr. Farad Muhammad. He used the name uh, Farad Muhammad. When he first uh, made himself known to me and others, he used just the Farad, Wallace Farad. And uh, he had an initial in between that that I never knew what that initial stood for. And that was a W. Uh, what, no, D. Wallace D. Farad is what he give, give to us. Then, in the third year, on his departure, he told me that his name was Wallace Farad Muhammad. W.F. Muhammad. This was the first time that he revealed his name. The uh, uh, first time he put the Muhammad. So, uh, I studied that then from what he gave to me to study. He gave to me a whole Quran in Arab and I couldn't read it. So then he goes and gets me a whole Quran in uh, Arabic and English. And so I taken this book and I studied it from what he uh, lined me up with. He gave me a, a copy of uh, Texas and uh, places and other books. He gave to me the names of a hundred and four books that is in the Congressional Library in Washington. Uh, and I studied them for seven years. Uh, there, up and down the East Coast. And I have the Quran that he gave to me, given about two-thirds of it to study. The other third, he said, didn't uh, amount to anything because uh, that would be a problem in some other man's time and not our time and we shouldn't be worried about what the other fellow will have to do. Let him worry over that. Well, when I first met him, it came to me uh, that he was the uh, man that the Bible prophesied would come in the last days as the son of man. And uh, I recognized him to be that as I had studied the Bible ever since I was a little 
child. When I first learned to read, I learned to read the Bible. And uh, I always thought that I would be a preacher, but not a preacher of Islam. I didn't know nothing about Islam. I thought I would be a preacher of uh, the religion of my father. That was Christianity. He was a Baptist preacher, and I thought maybe I would be one. But I always told them if I ever preach, I would, uh, I would make enemies. I said because uh, my father and other preachers would not like me if I preach. I said because I see so many things that they are uh, saying and preaching is wrong. And uh, so I went along like that until I was 35 uh, years old uh, before I actually was sent to preach. Then when I met this man, then I, I told him, I said, you are the one that uh, the Bible teaches that will come, the Son of Man or the Messiah. And so he whispered in my ear, he got close to me, he looked all around to see who heard that. And he whispered in my ear and told me, he said, yes. He said, but uh, keep quiet. He says, uh, don't say anything to anyone about that. He said, I will let you know that you said that.